So, water is pretty boring, right? It just kind of sits there. But it has a few special properties that will actually reveal themselves once you see it in slow motion. A great way to see some of water's interesting properties is just to pour it into a glass. So I'm going to hold it way up here and pour it in and we'll take a look at it. I might want to sit back. Wow. Now we're going to take a look at one of the epitomes of high speed photography. And that's a water drop. Another good way to observe water is out of a hose. The weather is much too sunny for a storm. I was hoping to get some footage of raindrops, so I guess I'll just have to make my own. So what I'm going to do is take this hose and I'm going to set it on shower and use this to kind of recreate a storm with a bunch of falling raindrops and see what kind of effect it makes. So I think those droplets were a little too small, don't you think? Yeah, you're right. It didn't, it didn't look completely like rain. Um, I bet we could change the setting and get something a little closer though, don't you think? Yes. Let's try it. The last thing we're going to do is something that's probably happened to almost every one of you. Um, let's say you're cleaning some silverware in the sink and you run the spoon under the faucet. It's probably going to do something like this. So hopefully you don't think water is too terribly boring now. Um, the slow motion clips that we've seen made it seem pretty interesting, but now it's time to go take a look at it on the big screen. Even though the topic of this uh, episode was fairly boring sounding, just water, uh, I still think there are a lot of interesting properties that revealed themselves, um, especially with this first shot, which was just pouring water into a, uh, a glass. Uh, normally, you go into your kitchen, you're thirsty, you pour a drink, you don't think much about what happens. Um, but really, there's a lot of fluid dynamics going on. I sort of poured this from a really tall height just to sort of emphasize um, and make these changes more drastic because obviously you wouldn't do this in your kitchen. But this really shows the difference between a solid and a liquid. 
um, we have all of these molecules of water, H2O, that are uh, sort of just like floating amongst each other. And they have a certain amount of, t of surface tension, which is why it sort of stays in the stream. Uh, if it didn't have surface tension, it would all fall apart as it's falling down. Uh, but it has some amount, so that's why it can stay in the stream. But once it comes in contact with the glass, all of these water molecules can't continue through the glass because the glass is solid, so it has to start spreading out. But yeah, at this point, uh, mid-pour, uh, this is 2,500 frames per second, by the way, uh, this water is sort of like hitting at the bottom, and it basically just, in all directions, comes back out. So we have this wave of water in the air. and what happens is, as it comes out, it keeps spreading out, and the surface tension starts to break apart, and that's why we get all of these droplets that it's turned into, um, because the glass sort of spreads it out. And so to begin to visualize what happens during a thunderstorm, uh, we took a look at just a single droplet of water, and how it behaves when it impacts some water. Unfortunately, um, when I made this video, I didn't have a macro lens on my high-speed camera, so I couldn't really get a super close-up shot of this. This was the minimum focal length that I could do with the lens I had. Um, so this is definitely something we'll revisit once we have uh, better equipment to do it. But, I mean, still, we got, we got a good picture at 2,500 frames per second. But you, can, you can see that uh, once the droplet goes in, you get sort of this crown-looking shape that comes out and that sort of like pulls it back in and it forces up like a jet of water and then sometimes this will actually disconnect from a different drop and so we'll have a second drop that's falling from a much smaller length right there and this will continue it could do it again just depending on how quickly that second drop is falling and so we, we get like a little tiny jet right there not much and then all of the energy is now dispersed outwards and that's why we have all these rings uh, but let's take a look at the 5,000 frames per second. Sort of really delve into the physics of how this droplet works. By reducing the resolution to allow us to get to 5,000 frames per second, uh, it sort of crops it in some, so it seems like we're closer, but it's, it's just a lower resolution to get closer into the picture. Um, so here's a water droplet which is a factor of two times slower than our previous shot. When we, when, we, when we take a close look at the impact of a droplet, we can see that since these materials are the same, the water droplet is essentially a sphere, and once it contacts it, it starts to open up like this. Uh, it starts to get absorbed into the pan of water. And as it does that, as you can see like what my hands are doing, you see a force coming out because it gets absorbed outwards and down. And what happens is, since there's energy in this water droplet, a little bit, because it's just a droplet, this energy has to go down, but also out. And the motion that it gives sort of creates this arc. And so we have mass of water moving upwards. And we get this, like, crown. I, th I believe it's called a coronet. I think that's the actual technical term for the shape that we're seeing. Since a combination of losing momentum and inertia and also uh, the surface tension of the water, this crown coronet sort of stops in the air. And then it has to fall back down. And so now we have the energy moving back down into the water, and that's why we get another jet. It's like this, it's this reciprocating movement of the mass moving down, having to spread out, and then it has to move back in to fill in that space that it just created. Because there's like a bubble now, and so it has to fill that back in, and it responds by pushing another droplet into the air. And you see we, got, we even got a third droplet coming out. And this will actually continue down on the microscopic scale until we have all of the energy dispersed into these rings. happens every time a droplet lands in a puddle during a thunderstorm, 
uh, in your sink anytime a water droplet falls. There's a lot of physics involved. So pouring water into a glass or watching a water droplet isn't enough to actually see how the fluid dynamics works. So we decided to get out the hose and see how that would work instead. On a bigger scale. Yeah. Uh, so the first shot we did, I just kinked the hose and released it all at once. This was more for fun. This wasn't really to learn anything. Although we still kind of learned something here because if you've seen our Coke and Mentos video, uh, episode two, uh, we had a shot where uh, we had a bottle on the ground, we put Mentos in, and at first the fluid didn't come up very quickly because there wasn't very much gas bubbles. But as the pressure increased, fluid behind it came out faster, and so it sort of like pushed that out of the way. That's essentially what's happening here. Um, at the beginning, the water was barely coming out but then as I released the kink, it added more pressure, and so we get this giant rush of water, pushing that water out of the way. So my first idea to uh, sort of visualize a storm was to use the shower setting on the hose. Droplets aren't actually that small, so this shot wasn't actually that good. Um, as you saw Grace pointed out, right after we did it, she said, don't you think those droplets were a little too small? But we sort, we sort of get an idea of what's going on. Um, we have a really rough surface of the water right now because if you look at it frame by frame and just watch one droplet like this one it hits the water and it has its own little coronet and we have this disturbance of energy that's distributed in these waves and meanwhile we have droplets around it that are landing and so they have their own energy put into the system and so we have these waves colliding with each other which um, if you study sound waves at all um, you know that there's constructive interference and destructive interference based on the way that these waves uh, sort of come together. They can either cancel each other out or they can add their energy together. So that's basically what all of these waves are doing. And so that makes for a really rough surface on this water. And this is basically what a puddle ends up looking like. I tried to get a macro shot with this lens at 10,000 frames per second, and I'm not quite sure it turned out very good. Um, I think it was just the size of the droplets. They were just too small to see detail. And like, we, we do get a, like, a splash there that we can see, but for the most part we just see these like speckles just falling, which is sort of like a pleasing shot to watch, you know, but we, we can't really learn much from this, so unfortunately this isn't a good shot. but maybe you guys will like it, I don't know. And so I took off the hose head, and so we have just this giant stream of water coming down. And so we have really variable sized droplets, like some are really small, but we also have these really large ones that are falling as well. And this is a more accurate um, visualization of what goes on during a storm. At the beginning of the shot, we must have had a really large droplet that produced this giant jet coming into the air. And we have droplets colliding with these droplets, so we get some really interesting effects. Like this super large one, that's really in focus. It impacts, and it sort of pushes its way through these waves, and since it's big enough, it can produce its own coronet. And so it's basically just a battle between all of these energy waves from these droplets and the way that they interact with each other, you get these really strange splashes going on and droplets colliding with each other. So the 10,000 frames per second shot of this looked a lot better since the droplets were bigger. You could see them a lot better. Promise? I think so. Okay, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, let's, let's find one first. 
Uh, since the, the depth of field is really shallow, it was hard to get some of these droplets in focus. But towards the beginning, we have a pretty big droplet right here, and we can see exactly how it collides. And we have like a pretty big coronet going on. And we actually see another droplet comes down and collides with it. It's like aliens coming to attack. No. No? Okay. Just trying to... Have fun. <laughs> I don't know. Use my imagination. Do not have fun. Yeah, now, now that you've learned the basic physics of a water droplet, there's not, there's not really much more to know other than all of these water droplets sort of do the same thing, but in different ways based on how the water is behaving. And so when you walk outside during a thunderstorm and you look at a puddle and it looks all chaotic with all these droplets going on, just know that it looks probably just like this. And I feel like if you were able to observe the world in slow motion, like this. The simplest things would just look beautiful, actually, as we saw with like soap bubbles. I would never have anticipated them to pop like that. And just water droplets, they just look surreal. It's, it's quite fascinating. And that's really like the drive for most people who have high-speed cameras, is to just look at things, not, not just explosions and bullets, but also things that are in nature. And you can, you can find some interesting stuff in almost anything. The last clip, again, was just really to have fun. Um, but again, there's something to be learned. So again, the surface tension is holding the stream together. And we have a boundary that it's running into. And so just like the martini glass, it has to distribute this uh, volume of water in whatever way it can. And since you're holding the spoon, it basically has to go outwards. And so you see, Whenever there's like a big part of the stream that comes down, that's when it really pushes it out really far. And so we have this like disc that is now in the air of water. Whatever volume was in that giant droplet is now distributed over this disc. And as it spreads out, eventually it's going to get too thin. And that's where, if we go back to a different point, like here, we have a lot of it spread out right here. But once it spreads out too far, it starts tearing apart because the surface tension can't hold too thin of a layer together. And 10,000 frames per second. The stream droplets aren't very consistent, so you see we have like a thick part there and it kind of gets like thinner, thick again. And so that's why we see like these, these pulses coming out of like more and more water. And so in between these little pulses is where the water is going to sort of tear apart due to the lack of surface tension and the thinness of the layer. But again, this is something that happens every time, almost every time you clean a spoon in your sink. And normally you think of it as an annoyance because, you know, everything gets wet. And that is actually what happened here. Thanks for watching uh, episode 8 of High Speed Fanatics. Uh, next week we'll have a, a pretty interesting episode, actually. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, we're starting to get into the more destructive topics, at least once, you know, because we've had things that are kind of boring, sort of made interesting, but now we're going to start to get into the, the really interesting topics. So hopefully you'll enjoy those. Um, but for now, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like our video, share with your friends, uh, sort of help us out. All right, again, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this week's episode of High Speed Fanatics. You can follow us on Twitter at username HighSpeedFans. You can also find us at Facebook.com slash HighSpeedFanatics. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to send us an email at HighSpeedFanatics at gmail.com.